Welcome to Antune. Today's tutorial is about Hoi Marai from Schumann's Kinderzenen. So far, it has been the most requested piece from the scenes from childhood, and I'm looking forward to sharing my tips and suggestions to help you play this beautiful piece. If you are ready, let's dive into it. Here we have four layers, and they need to be distinguished, designed, and voiced in a very delicate way. The constant changes in their character make Hoi Marai one of the most effortful pieces of the cycle. The basic idea of the voicing technique is straightforward. Separate the layers and then color them with various dynamics and articulation. Just like in the first piece of the Kinderzinnen. In Träumerei, however, we cannot label the layers with a single color, as they vary in dynamics depending on their mission. Each of these layers takes either the leading or the accompanying role at different points. In this lesson, I will show you how to coordinate this traffic and make the music flow. To make your interpretation more dreamy and extraordinary, I want to encourage you to give your best and repeat to improve the passages as many times as you need. Alright, let's get started with the right hand. At this moment, do not implement the pedal yet, so you can learn to connect the notes only with fingers and boost the quality of your legato. Let's play the melody of the first phrase. I use specific wrist movements to make the connection more natural and to produce a beautiful tone. In the first motif, I start with a half circle, from left to right. Then I draw another half circle in the same direction, which allows me to control the resistance of the keys and make it sound way more melodic and natural. Now I want to signify the F by bouncing my wrist. It is the highest point of the melody. Considering the crescendo, we need more power in the climax. And the bouncing movement will benefit the volume while damping its harshness. After this point, it would make sense to reduce the intensity by calming the melody towards the end of the phrase. Make sure to keep your wrist very flexible by adding the half circular movement depending on the direction of the melody. In the last motif, let's highlight the melody with a brighter top voice. When you design the movement in a slow tempo, you can slightly exaggerate the size of the motion. Therefore, after getting comfortable with it, it will naturally get less pronounced while keeping its core. Now, let's add the second layer. Make sure to keep it softer, as we don't want to dominate the melody. Try to caress the keys weightlessly. You can let go of the second layer to play the rest of the melody, as we will prolong it later with the pedal. Let's move on to the left hand. Also here we have two layers, and regarding the dynamics, both layers have their moments. I will keep them soft in the first bar. Then a secondary theme appears in the top layer. The melody in the left hand is conspicuously related to the right hand's melody. It also starts with the climax tone and goes in the corresponding direction. Let's highlight the upper layer and keep the bass much softer. Crescendo. And finish the phrase softly. At this moment, the bass takes the lead and becomes a bridge to the following phrase. Now, 
Please give it a try with both hands. I will prioritize the right hand's melody, the left hand's melody more gentle, and the rest will be simply soft. I will still play it without pedal, and I recommend you do the same, so we can monitor our fingers for better control. Please be aware that the crescendo in the third bar is valid only for the left hand, which is quite unique and gives this motif a special flavor when we play both hands together. Let's move on to the following phrase. We have a very similar start, but the climax tone is a little higher, so the crescendo could be a little more significant. The rest of the phrase is a little more sophisticated, because there is a dialogue between these four layers. As I showed earlier, I will prioritize the melody and keep the rest softer. The layers must blend perfectly without dominating the main melody. Let me show you how to do that. The idea which I want to duplicate for each melody is to have a pronounced start and calm end. Now this is the tricky, but also the fun part. I will play these four melodies at the same time and make sure to execute each of them with their original dynamics, without interfering with each other. Now let's add the other voices and keep them very gentle. As soon as you figure out the voicing in this first section, it will be way more comfortable to play the rest of the piece, because the melodies and the textures are super similar in many ways. Before we move on, let me show and explain the pedaling. I use the right pedal, and at times I also use it together with the left pedal. About the right pedal, first of all, I like using it halfway, because I don't want to lose the clarity of the voicing, considering it is a relatively soft piece. I think using full pedal will generate too much of a blur. I will press it halfway and keep it for the whole bar. Here I press the left pedal to add a little more affection to the chord. Then change at first and second beats. Then at first, second, third, twice in the fourth, and finally the first and second beats. Here I will simultaneously let go of the right and add the left pedal. I think it makes the transition sound more refreshing. In this way, we will make sure that the harmonies and the melodies don't get mixed, but still blend with clarity. In the following phrase, I again first keep the pedal for the whole bar. Then change it on the first and second beats. 
Then I change it four times, considering the harmonic development. Then change it on the first, second and third beats again. Here I let the bass take the lead and let go of the sustain pedal. Before I play the whole section, let me tell you a few things about phrasing. There are three significant points in the first phrase. Let's call them the stations that we are going to visit. Imagine a tram. It moves slowly from point A, gets the momentum, and gradually slows down before arriving at point B. And the same for point C, D, E, etc. In my opinion, we need to do the same with this music. The first point, or station, second, and third. Now imagine the first one is your starting point. Then you go to second, and the third point is the arrival. A pretty similar plan in the following phrase. First point, second, and third. The difference is that the second point is higher than before. Perhaps it asks for a little more effort and volume to reach it. Also, I will decrease the dynamics more gradually, as there is a ritardando. Besides, it is the end of the first section, and I want to give a conclusion feeling to the music by stretching and softening it. Let's play the whole section and put everything in perspective. Let's move on. In the following phrase, the dynamic is still piano, but perhaps we can search for a more silky tone. The harmony develops to a point where it hasn't been before, and I think it has a more melancholic and fragile character. I want to grab the opportunity and try creating a more intimate color. Try creating a dialogue with the melodies, and play the rest very gently. The second half of this phrase could be the most challenging passage of the entire piece. Let's quickly break it down, to make it more accessible to understand. The direction in the main melody is just the same as before. It comes right after the climax tone, so I will start a little brighter and gradually fade away with it. Try playing legato and bring it to the destination. Here is the challenge. The melody in the second layer starts with the right, switches to the left, and ends with the right hand. To make this passage sound as effective as it can, we need to make the switching unnoticeable. Try to attack the keys similarly, specifically in the hand switching points. Also here, a significant start and fade away. Melody in the fourth layer is relatively short, but has wide intervals. Let's play it very legato and melodic. At the starting point, I like to highlight the bass note for diversity in sound. Once again, this is our connection to the following phrase. Let's play just the melodies together. Now I will include the other notes and play a little slower, 
Pay attention to the way these melodies cooperate. I want to make the dialogue stand out by keeping everything but the melodies soft. When practicing with hands separate, or practicing these layers individually, remember to use the same fingerings to get the most out of the voicing technique. The following phrase has a very similar start as the previous one, but here it is in B-flat major. The upper melody. The second, again switching hands. and the bridge. Let's put them together. Emphasize the melodies and keep the rest softer. The following phrase is a clone of the very first phrase. So I will just go on. And now we have the last phrase. In many editions, there is a slur on the top of the first motif. In the Urtex editions, there isn't. Some editions also suggest the slur optionally, probably because they consider it was a mistake and Schumann forgot to write it. I like to use this opportunity and consider he didn't make a mistake. It is the last appearance of this melody, and I want to make it sound more dreamy. I will touch the keys weightlessly and disconnect the beginning of the melody. I think it sounds more dreamy, sort of like a lullaby. I will emphasize the climax point of the melody with a very gentle but still sparkling top voice. Then keep the melody soft but present. And start gradually slowing down. If you struggle with reaching, you could play it as an arpeggio, and perhaps take the top voice with the left hand. The left hand also highlights the melody. Let's put them together. Optionally, in the last four bits, you could highlight the bass layer instead, which will give a little broader feeling to the conclusion of the piece. There are often discussions about the tempo as a result of the metronome mark of Robert Schumann. His wife Clara Schumann marked 80 for a quarter note in her edition, considerably slower than Robert Schumann's 100th metronome mark. It encourages me to be more flexible with my choice of speed and timing. I will briefly show how I try to stay relevant with these metronome markings by an example. I mentioned three significant points in the first phrase. I like to stretch the timing around these points and stay on them a little longer. The rest of the melody will be very fluent in comparison. I start more settled and calm. Forward. 
and stretch. Forward. Forward. Stretch. Stretch more. And next point. Rather than metronome mark, I suggest searching more on expression and how you want to implement the rubato. Let me give you some ideas. If you feel like playing it more quickly, which can be a very refreshing interpretation, I still suggest emphasizing the significant points, but perhaps not as much. With the rest, I will increase the speed just a little more than in the previous example. You've heard me playing this in a slower tempo. But now let's assume you want to play it even slower. In this case, I would recommend a little more diversity in dynamics and timing. I would increase the stretch in timing at significant points. Also a more powerful crescendo and a more gradual fadeaway. Feel free to mix things up and search for what you like. Having the possibility of adjusting the tempo depending on your mood and mindset is very special about this piece, and I recommend being more spontaneous with it. Spontaneous as dreams. Now I will play the whole piece for you, and put some of these ideas and options together. Here it goes. I highly recommend focusing on one phrase at a time. Break it down, learn the puzzle, put it together, and move on to the next one. 
Be consistent with fingerings from day one, so you can learn it sooner and better. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, as it helps me out. Good luck, and till the next one.